Hi, this is Dr. Chu、um, giving a talk on the topic of urethral trauma. To begin, we'll outline basic anatomy, talk a little bit about, about pathophysiology, clinical features regarding diagnosis of urethral trauma, as well as、uh, some management and、uh, common complications following treatment of urethral trauma. So to begin. On the diagram on the left, you'll see a picture of the male、uh, anatomy,、uh, broken down into anterior urethra, consisting of the penile and bulbar urethra, as well as the posterior urethra, which consists of the membranous and prostatic urethra. In females, however, this distinction is much less clear due to the absence of a prostate, as well as an obvious external、uh, urinary sphincter. In females,、uh, the proximal urethra Uh, consists mostly of the proximal two thirds of the urethra、uh, versus the distal urethra, which consists of the distal one third of the urethra. Pathophysiology can be separated by thinking about、uh, anatomy,、uh, the anterior and posterior urethras. Anterior urethra injury commonly occurs with straddle injuries, such as when a patient、uh, falls on a fence or penetrating trauma、uh, from gunshot or stab wounds. And the injury in in males is commonly to the bulbar urethra of the、uh, anterior urethra. Posterior urethral injuries, on the other hand,、uh, commonly occur with pelvic fractures,、uh, such as from motor vehicle accidents, and is estimated to occur concurrently in about 10% of males with pelvic fractures, and a little less in females. The clinical features of urethral trauma. Most commonly, probably occur in the emergency room setting when a patient is brought in、uh, after a motor vehicle accident or after a fall. In general, there is an inability to urinate or to pass a Foley catheter in the emergency room. Patients often have a palpably full bladder, especially if、uh, they had been rendered unconscious and have not、uh, tried to void.、Uh, oftentimes, you can see blood at the urethral meatus, and this is、uh, kind of a telltale sign of a potential urethral injury. And Sometimes you can also see perineal hematomas, such as a butterfly a hematoma. In men, specifically, you can find a high riding prostate, or what's called a balladable prostate, on a digital rectal examination. This is basically when you stick a finger in and、uh, try to palpate the prostate, and the prostate is essentially riding high and free on the examination. In women, you can often find blood at the vaginal introitus. As well as vulvar edema for more distal urethral trauma. Diagnosis of urethral trauma often depends on imaging studies.、Uh, in particular, the retrograde urethrogram、uh, is the most commonly used and almost gold standard for diagnosis of urethral trauma. So, to perform a retrograde urethrogram or RUG for short, you insert a small catheter, a small foley, or、uh, oftentimes. Radiologists can cut off a butterfly needle and just stick the two portion of it into the distal urethra. You grip it closed at the meatus and you inject about 30 cc's of contrast into the penis、uh, in males. Oftentimes, you do require oblique films, such as in the image seen here. You do need to pull the penis to one side to ensure adequate visualization of the entire length of the urethra. And in this example, this patient has a complete posterior urethral distraction defect. On the left upper picture is an example of an anterior urethral injury, again seen on a retrograde urethrogram, clearly delineated by the arrow. And below captions A, B, and C, you can find also another anterior urethral injury delineated with the rug. But in this case,、uh, the study is also performed concurrently with、uh, what's called an up and downogram, meaning up retrograde via the Urethral catheter and down、uh, via a suprapubic tube that had been inserted in this patient. In picture C, you can clearly see the area of injury. So the management of trauma、uh, to the urethra can be broken down into anterior and posterior, just like the、uh, baseline anatomy. For anterior urethral trauma, if it's a simple contusion with no evidence of gross extravasation on a retrograde urethrogram, if you can place a foley across,、uh, you leave it for two weeks. If it's an incomplete disruption, meaning very slight extravasation, you can also leave a foley for two weeks. If there is complete disruption, then、uh, you may need a suprapubic drainage、uh, for about six weeks, as well as 
a uh, delayed anastomotic urethroplasty, which uh, we will get into in a little bit. Exceptions to delayed repair. Penal fractures, most commonly from sexual intercourse, may require immediate repair to the tunica surrounding the, uh, the corporal bodies. Uh, from low velocity penetrating trauma, such as handguns or stab wounds, you can also perform immediate repair. The management of posterior urethral trauma consists mostly of an attempt at primary realignment first and foremost. The goal of this is that it can avoid a 100% stricture rate if the patients are managed with just a suprapubic tube. Primary realignment comes in various forms. One can attempt to pass a Foley catheter blindly uh, and give it one shot, and if not, then they may try to uh, cystoscopically insert a Foley catheter. But either way, an attempt is uh, made to pass a catheter either retrograde or antegrade through this disruption or injury site. And if one is able to pass a catheter, then it stays in for about six weeks. Oftentimes, patients will still require a suprapubic tube as a temporary urinary diversion until a catheter can be placed. And oftentimes, if they do have an SP tube, then you keep it as an extra safety valve. The main advantage of this, again, is that uh, it can avoid a 100% stricture rate if the patients are managed just with a suprapubic tube alone without any attempt at realigning the injured area. If the primary realignment is unsuccessful, and patients end up with a suprapubic tube, they often keep it for about three months uh, before undergoing a delayed urethroplasty. Now, this surgery is highly successful with rates of success being greater than 95%, but this does require three months of a patient keeping a suprapubic tube in and to allow the scar tissue and the hematoma to settle before the urethroplasty. And sometimes, even after a successful realignment, Patients may still ultimately require a urethroplasty if patients suffer from stricture formation from their injuries. So complications from urethral trauma, uh, oftentimes you'll see erectile dysfunction. And this is one reason why if the primary realignment is unsuccessful in posterior urethral distraction defect repairs, why you wait three months? Because studies have shown that any attempt at immediate repair, open repair, as compared to a delayed repair, results in about 50% chance of erectile dysfunction. The exceptions would be any concomitant rectal bladder neck injuries, uh, which do require more immediate attention for risk of injury to the sphincter mechanisms. Studies have shown, however, that erectile dysfunction is often due to the extent of the original urethral trauma injury and not necessarily to the type of repair. Another main complication is urinary incontinence which also occurs more often in posterior urethral trauma. Uh, slightly, a lot less lower risk than erectile dysfunction, but in the case of, again, rectal or bladder neck injury, it's substantially higher for the continence mechanisms. For further readings, Drs. Uh, Mori and, and Duji uh, have written extensively on this in the main urology textbook, Campbell's and Walsh, and there are also some other reconstructive textbooks listed here, which you may peruse.